Hello, boys and girls. It's been a long time, but now, welcome to the Midnight Mech Shotgun Build Tutorial. Remastered. Some time ago now, I made a fantastic and mind-blowing tutorial. Let's not deny it, James. On how to make a realistic non-firing shotgun replica. Today I'm going to show you how we can improve your previous build, make it better and more realistic. Now let's take a look on the shotgun I built for a tutorial. And as you can see it looks pretty good. I'm very pleased with the stock. I'm not too pleased with the receiver though. It could have used a lot more sanding before I applied the paint. A good finish requires a lot of patience. And as you remember, the trigger is static. It doesn't move. Goddamn thing doesn't move at all. But if you put aside the lack of function, it's a nice piece of work. And that goes for the rest of the gun as well. I'm also very pleased with a forend and a vented barrel. But now I'm gonna show you my latest and more improved work. Oh yeah. Now this is my latest work. A son of Remington 870. For the love of God. It's disassembled at the moment, but not for long. The magazine tube, for instance, is threaded to help hold it in place inside the receiver. And as you can see, there's an 8mm bolt inside the magazine entry underneath. The magazine tube is to be turned until a tight fit is accomplished. And the barrel is held in place accordingly. The only difference is that the inside is not threaded. And finally, a nice customized end cap is placed to hold the barrel in place. I get you felt the fingers off my face. And there you have it. My best build so far. I built it pretty much the same way as described in the tutorial. Though some improvements has been made. I gave it a high gloss walnut colored stock in forend, as well as a matte black overall finish. I spent a lot of time sanding and polishing every single piece this time. It really paid off. The pump action mechanism is actually working on this one. And that's very satisfying. And the trigger has been fitted with a spring and a pivot point. And like I said, I built it almost exactly like in a tutorial, except for some of the new features, which I'm going to show you now. Let's start with the trigger. This trigger, as you can see, is moving because of some simple mechanics. In order to accomplish this, you need to make one of these. A long trigger with two holes. One in the center and the second hole at the top. Then you'll need a small spring to help add resistance when you squeeze the trigger. The hole in the center will act as a pivot point, while the hole at the top is for attaching the spring. You'll also need a small pin or a nail to go through the center of the trigger as well as go through the slot inside the receiver where the trigger is attached. Now if you look at the drawing, you'll see that the spring is attached to the wood inside the receiver with a small screw. Once both the pivot pin and the spring is attached, you'll have a working trigger. And in this cutaway, you can see how it should look when the trigger and trigger guard is in place. And finally, with the receiver fitted outside, you can also see that I made a guide hole for the magazine tube in the front of the receiver. That's for additional support. And if you follow these instructions, you'll have a working trigger. So congratulations, asshole. <laughs> For the love of God. In order to perfect the pump action, I made a few altercations. Not only did it work, but it also saved me a lot of time this way. And as you just saw, there's a pipe in the middle of it, slightly bigger than the magazine tube. And there's two rods sticking out as well, holding it in place inside the receiver. So instead of carving out a solid block of wood, you just grab a pipe, one to two millimeter bigger than the magazine, in diameter. Then you get some wooden sticks used for stirring paint and glue them around the pipe. This is, like I said, a hell of a lot easier than the alternative. The pipe will work as a guide, ensuring a smooth operation when you pump it. And for the best possible result you should use a heavy-duty wood glue, like this. 
but there will be some dents you'll need to fill and some corners you'll have to rebuild. And that's when this fine product comes in. It's a special speckle made from pine resin, sawdust, and more of the good stuff. Product placement. It's fantastic. And after you glue the sticks to the pipe, it should look something like this. Please ignore the angular attachment at the side. This piece is from a different project, but it's still the same principle. Then you'll just need to grind the edges until you get the shape that you're after. Start with the rasp. Then use a finer grade wood file before you move on to sandpaper. Now the rest is pretty basic. Fill in the holes with a spackle, sand it, install two small rods like on mine, and finally conceal the pipe and rods using the spackle as well. Then all you need to do is sand it some more right before you apply the wood dye and oil. And then you're done. And it should look like this. Now congratulations, boy. Now it's working. So ultimately, if you follow the instructions from the tutorial, as well as incorporating these new techniques, you'll be able to achieve the same results, or even better. And now it's time for my award-winning speech, called Hang in there, son. The sun will shine. You see, the thing is, there's no one way for making these kind of props. There are several ways. And it all comes down to you and how you're able to find new and creative solutions. There's been a lot of trial and error for me when I first started making model guns. But that's the way you improve and learn. Because you see, you got two choices now. You can tell yourself that you're a failure. You're a failure. You're nothing but a big fat phone failure and a waste of your father's sperm. And become a heavy drinker with no prospects. A mere shadow of your former self, lost in a maze of alcohol and loneliness forever. Or you can simply go with the other choice, saying I'm the best, I can say, do, and make whatever I want. Now stop touching me. I got a bit carried away there. Um, Basically what I'm trying to say is that practice makes perfect and don't give up on your project just because you didn't get it right the first time. And finally, if you got any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Just send me a message or leave a comment down below. And thank you very much for watching and please stay tuned for future events. For the love of mercy, would you stop that now? <laughs>